Hey guys, what's going on? It is Castle Perfect here. Today I'm bringing you a commentary on a Wi-Fi battle that I had yesterday. I was challenged by some passerby and I was quite interested into this battle because I saw a Diogon on his team and uh, since I am testing a completely new team, which actually is not even a team, it was just six Pokemon, six random Pokemon put together, I thought like it would be a good challenge to see if these guys uh, can actually put up with the Dialga. So I decided to start off with my Swampert as he decided to lead off with his Dialga. And straight off the bat, he goes for the Roar of Time. And I mean, like, wow, that's such an amazing animation. I am Cell, dude. That is such a cool animation. But um, I just proceeded to go ahead and set up the rocks because um, he's got a Charizard on his team, which most likely will go for the Mega Evolution at some point. He also has a, a Venusaur, which could also be a potential Mega Evolution. And a T-Tar, not to mention the T-Tar. Uh, but that, that's okay, that's okay. I'm just gonna go for an Earthquake here after I took uh, like 50% damage from the Roar of Time. So uh, he had to recharge because Roar of Time is an attack that needs to recharge on the second turn. So I was like, yeah, I might just leave this one, but then it gets max damage, and I was like, yeah, that's fine as well, because, I mean, Swampert was able to bring the Dialga down to a point where Persian can come in, a shiny Persian, and it, you don't even see the difference. So I go for the Nasty Plot here on the turn that he had to recharge, and I know that on the next turn I can pretty much just go for the Swift, or Shift, or whatever you pronounce that attack. And uh, I'm gonna be able to take down a Dialga, and you don't see that often, ladies and gents. You don't. Even though it was a critical hit, it didn't really matter because it w the Dialga would have done would have gone down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Technician Persian is such an amazing Pokemon in combination with Nasty Blood. Now, my opposition is gonna bring out the Tyranitar right now, which is totally fine by me. I know the Sandstream is gonna be activated, and uh, the Sandstorm is gonna come up. I'm just gonna go for the Water Pulse, and now, GP the Judge, had the freaking Sandstorm not been in effect, I would have taken down this Tyranitar. I would have swept this entire team with a Persian. Honestly, though, like, oh my god, that would have been so cool, but... Unfortunately, I do get the confusion hacks though, but um, he breaks through the confusion and goes for the brick break, takes me down, and uh, I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. Persian still did an amazing job of taking out a freaking Dialga, that is so amazing. And uh, not to mention that he did so much damage to this Tyranitar, to the point where my Lottie can come in here and just go for the Scold and finish off the job here. And uh, now looking at his team, I would say that uh, Milotic is really sitting well here, uh, especially after that Venusaur is taken care of, because really, there is nothing else on his team that can really, pretty, like, hurt Milotic that much, which is absolutely fantastic. Now the Sandstorm is actually going to end up hitting me, and somebody is just messaging me on Facebook, so I'm just going to... Like mute this thing here so you cannot hear the sound anymore. So he's gonna bring out the Empoleon at this point. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna stay in here, go for the Scald. I just don't know what kind of Empoleon this is at this point. So I just wanted to get the burn off. And um, that's exactly what I just tried to get. But then he goes for the Blizzard and misses. And I mean, like, yeah, that kind of makes sense because Blizzard is an attack that doesn't have that, the highest of accuracy. So I get buffeted by the Sandstorm. And then I get that uh, damage uh, re uh, recovered by the Leftovers. Now then. Uh, I see flame ore on Empoleon and I'm like, what? I was fishing for the burn and you you just burned yourself? Well, that's fine. And then I discovered that it, it is actually a physical attacking, or a mixed, se mixed sweeper, sorry, uh, Empoleon with facade and uh, flame orb. And it doesn't make sense uh, because I understand that, you know, Empoleon is part steel, so it cannot get poisoned. Um, but then burn, burn still lowers your attack though. It's not like you have Guts' ability. So, it was quite like the worst combination ever right there, so I'm able to get another Scald off just to deal damage as he's able to get a Blizzard off. Well, fortunately for me though, he doesn't get the Freeze, which is, really, which is really good. The Sandstorm subsides and I get once again more uh, HP back from the Leftovers as he's burned. And uh, another Scald will be sufficient to take down this Empoleon at this point and I'm like, yeah, I, I just have never ever seen an Empoleon with like Flame Warp. Like, that is something that took me by surprise, but at the same time, I was just face palming myself, like, oh my god, how... You know, it's original, I know, I'll give you that, it, it's amazing, it's amazing that you thought of something like this, but... It is not smart, because Flame Warp still lowers the attack of Empoleon, and it just... It, it just nullifies the boost, it, so it's, it's really... it doesn't make sense, it, does, it just doesn't. So, um, the Empoleon's gonna go down, and uh, he's gonna bring out the uh, Venusaur, and really, really unlucky on his part, he misses the, he misses the sleep, sleep Powder. And then I'm like, oh god, I feel so bad for this guy or this girl, I don't know who I'm talking to or I'm battling uh, against here. So, yeah, I'm just gonna fire off another Ice Beam, which is gonna be my second Ice Beam, and that's gonna be sufficient uh, to take down this Venusaur. I end up getting a critical hit, which did not matter in the end, 
because uh, it would have been a two-hit KO anyways. So um, it's kind of a melodic sweep, I would say, <laughs> because really uh, the rest of his team wasn't able to de deal that much damage to melodic, and like the leftovers was capable of bringing me back to almost full health. And uh, not to mention that uh, even my melodic, which is not trained to speed, was able to outspeed a Dragonite. Like wow, go away, Dragonite! You just got bitten down by an ice beam. So, Melodic is just looking awesome and sweet and, uh, you know, beautiful here. And uh, he's gonna bring out his last Pokemon at this point, which is gonna be the Charizard. And because of the Stealth Rocks that I set up on the first turn, this thing is gonna lose uh, 50% of its health, which is absolutely amazing. Now, he's gonna go for the Mega Evolution and shows up with the uh, Mega Charizard X. And uh, this is the physical side of Charizard. And he goes for the Fly, and I'm like, wow, really? Okay, I mean, Fly would have been stabbed on normal Charizard because it's still flying type, but then after you evolve, it doesn't make sense because it's not longer stabbed. I know you can still get that boost from Strong Jaw, I think it is, or Strong, no, Strong Claw, sorry, uh, or something like that, like the ability of Charizard X, uh, because, you know, physical attacks that make contact, they, they are boosted by 30%, I believe, and, uh, you know, Fly actually takes profit from that, so, uh, but still, it loses the uh, stab, so using Fly is really not a convenient convenient move to use on Charizard. So, Skull is gonna be sufficient to take down the Charizard from this range. This is gonna be a good game, guys, and thank you very much for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a like, and I love you guys forever, so take care. <laughs>